Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome back to the channel. So I got quite a bit of uh, things to show you here for the mail day. I went a little bit ham the last little while, so some of that stuff's starting to come in. So a little bit of everything, a variety, some old, some new, uh, three sports. I got some hockey, I've got some baseball, and I've got some football. And also a couple of new collections that I'm starting to work on slowly, which I'll be able to talk to as I go through the cards. So without further ado, just so we can get going on this. First one, in addition to the uh, Medano PC here, so this one, we've got another one of the UD Black ones. As uh, you may have noticed, if you've seen any of the recent videos, I'm a bit on a UD Black kick, starting to fill in some of those uh, ones. This one is from 2008, 2009 UD Black. It's a dual autographed jersey card of Bonanno and Marty Turco. This one is number 12 of 25, which is awesome because 12 is my favorite number. Um, Another limited edition card, uh, because a lot of these were. Uh, specifically though, my main thing with the UD Black is how much I like the design. So you can see here on the back on this, couple of players, straightforward. So a good addition to the PC there. Hoping to add in a few more of the other ones. There's not too many more that I'm missing. A couple of them are just basically just parallels. So I think I'm gonna focus on the main ones and if I'm able to get that, then I'll look at the parallels if they become available. So. That's number one. Number two is from COMC. Uh, it's actually a couple of orders that end, up, that end up being consolidated into one order, which turned out great. So first for the vintage collection, I've got some 55 uh, Bowmans. So a lot of these are in uh, pretty beat up shape, kind of uh, following the philosophy of my collection. So when it comes to vintage cars, I'm not too worried about the condition they're in. I'm actually, I was down to only 26 more to complete the set. So this is uh, 10 more cards, including a bunch of the uh, little bit more expensive umpire cards. So getting these uh, has brought me down so that I have 16 more that I need to do in order to close off this set. So we're gonna see about that. Uh, my goal is to try to see if I can put a dent in it. So obviously this one's a good example here. So you got a little bit of water damage there at the bottom, you can see that. And it's a little more uh, evident over back here. I'm assuming that's water damage, I believe that's what it is. Another umpire here, Bell and Fan. It's, it's interesting because I think this is the only set I can think of where they really took the time to have the prominence of uh, having umpires and each one of them got their own write-up. Kind of talking about their backgrounds a little bit. I don't think any of this would pass for today. Although I'd be curious to see if there was any other set that ever took advantage of this and did a bunch of umpire cards. There you go. All right, so that's part of the order and as well as that. So now the rest of the order is a little bit of... Uh, different football cards mostly. So we're gonna take a look at that here. So I loaded up as much as I could. I'm trying to pick up different rookie cards of the other players and starting to put little mini stockpiles together. Not because I assume that it's gonna be, I don't treat it as a big investment thing, but I don't mind the idea of putting a couple of these away just in case any of these other guys ever take off. It'd be kind of nice to have. So I'm trying to get them as inexpensively as possible. So none of these are the high end ones, but let's take a look at this first. So from Unparalleled, it's like one of my favorite sets from the box breaks you've seen. So that's a Josh Rosen rookie, and I've got two of those. Trying to really pick up a lot of the quarterbacks from this recent uh, rookie class. So you got Lamar Jackson there. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go. I also really like the Luminance uh, design. Um, I really, these are not gonna be the most expensive ones, even if these guys do take off. These are not gonna be like the rookie card to have, but I think for a real collector, they're gonna wanna have these ones as well. So they're kind of nice to have, and then you've got Again, unparalleled, you've got the Lamar Jackson from that. I wasn't able to pull any of that in the boxes. These are kind of fun. These are the uh, the ones from the National. Really kind of cool looking design. This this one's uh, to $3.99 and it's got him in his uh, college uniform. So again, Lamar Jackson. And then a couple of really, uh, these are probably gonna be the little cheap ones here, but you got the most recent score and you got two Lamar Jacksons. So a little bit of Josh Rosen, a little bit of Lamar Jackson, and now a little bit of Baker Mayfield. So again, Luminescence. I think I've got all the major rookie guys now, all the quarterbacks in Luminescence now. So Baker, and again, the National. I really like these cards. And then if Baker starts to take off, I gotta take a closer look at these and see if any of these are decent candidates for grading or not. But either way, it's kind of nice to have these cards. Uh, so they've got two versions of these, I believe. So you've got the one in their pro uniform as well as the one in the college uniform. So I picked up two of uh, his in the college uniform. Both out of 3.99. Pretty straightforward design though, nice, look, nice looking cards. All right, a little out of favor right now, but you got Sam Darnold. It really comes down to what the Jets end up doing in the long run, if uh, Sam Darnold is part of that and the Jets turn it around. These will start to pick up again, but it actually, out of the rookies, probably Lamar Jackson and Sam Darnold are probably the better guys to pick up, maybe even Josh Rosen, just because if you do think they're gonna turn out okay, then right now the hype is pretty much all around Baker, and then uh, from last year's rookie class, the last one of these that I picked up, this guy here, Patrick Mahomes. 
So I've got three of his rated rookies from Donruss. So I decided to pick these up. Um, out of all of them, Baker Mayfield, I think, probably has a good future. We'll see how it goes. It is the Cleveland Browns. But at the same time, like Patrick Mahomes like is playing lights out. So I was happy to pick up a couple of these. I have a feeling these are going to start creeping up a little bit more. You know, if he keeps playing at the level he's playing at, or even a fraction of the level he's playing at right now, this could look pretty good. It really comes down to if the team continues to have success, if he continues to play well, if he's in the MVP conversation, if they make the playoffs, if he looks good in a playoff game. All of this could affect uh, could affect these cards, which are already starting to pick up a little bit with the hype starting to build behind the Mahomes. So there's still, if anybody anybody who suggests like there's not much room, more room for the hype to build up, there certainly is. We're still really early in the season, and if um, and if it continues going forward, and as we start heading in towards the playoffs, then it could really hit a fever pitch. So we'll see how that turns out. So for the next one, it's going to be a new uh, a new sub collection that I'm working on. So I'll put it on the screen here, and I'll show it to you, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So that's uh, Carlos Delgado Classic Best Autograph. Uh, so that's kind of uh, during his minor league days. He's playing for the Dunning Blue Jays there before he even made the big club. So the reason I decided to start uh, collecting this uh, the Delgado autographs is because, number one, they are actually pretty fairly priced. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, number two, he was the last link to the Blue Jays World Series teams because actually as a rookie, he got a little bit of playing time in 93. And um, one thing I didn't realize is that I believe he actually got a World Series ring for being part of that 93 team technically. So that's kind of interesting because he was the bridge to an era where the Jays really weren't competitive, even though they had really good players. It was him, Sean Green, and a couple of Jose Cruz Jr., and a couple of other young guys that eventually came to the team, but they were never able to get over the hump. Um, but in the end, you know, baseball reference is one of my favorite things, so it's kind of fun to go down the rabbit hole. And looking back at Delgado's numbers, I went and looked at it, and year after year, he was 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, or 40 home runs, 100 RBIs. He, you know, he came in second in MVP race back in 2003 to A-Rod. The thing is, I think what really hurt him and kind of got him one and done on the Hall of Fame ballot was that he, outside of the later part of his career when he played in New York, he wasn't in the big market. Toronto really didn't qualify. When he finally got to New York, he was playing very well, but then he got hurt right at the end of his career, and it cut his career short. 473 home runs doesn't sound as good as 500, but 1,500 RBIs, and the truth is he would have hit 500 home runs or more, but he also played an era where guys were hitting 40, 50, and 60 with, with enhancement. So unfortunately, that kind of hurts him a little bit and puts him into that uh, Fred McGriff category. I really feel like in his heyday, though, he was a tremendous hitter, like a really dangerous hitter in the American League. So just the same, I decided to start uh, picking up some Delgado autographs. So that's going to be a little sub-collection I'm going to work on. So that's uh, the first one to add to that. So next up is uh, actually uh, part of a group break that I participated in for uh, Buck City Breaks. So first of all, I'll kind of show this here. So I got the sticker to go along with it. Whoops, let me set that right. So Buck City Breaks. So here's the thing. I'm going to say one thing about this. I really like what Buck City Breaks does. So that's why I'm going to include the, the sticker here in the shot. Uh, conceptually, I like watching their YouTube channel, and I'll include a link in the description to it in case you're interested in seeing it. It really makes an entertaining product. The only thing I will say, though, is if you do decide to uh, participate in any of the group breaks, be a little bit picky and choosy about it. Because uh, So I took advantage of, uh, I decided to join in on one of their mixers. So you've had a box of XR, a box of Spectra, a box of um, Absolute Memorabilia, and I believe one other box that, that escapes me. So this, so I ended up drawing two random teams, and what I ended up getting out of it was the Seattle Seahawks, and the Miami Dolphins. And for participation, you put in $51 for that particular group break. And for $51, I got a numbered rookie of Alex Magoo. That's it. Um, it is an orange parallel. It is numbered to uh, 65, so 14 of 65 there. There we go. A little bit better. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, the Seahawks and the... Um, Unfortunately, the Seahawks and the Dolphins were not exactly well represented in those boxes. It is luck of the draw, so I'm not really blaming anybody. Um, it's just unfortunate. This is the this is all I was able to get out of it. Um, the problem is that I shouldn't say the problem. Actually, let me correct myself. My suggestion would be, especially for a break like that, because there's only 16 cars in a Spectra box, and I've noticed in when I've been looking at different breaks, it seems to fall under, you'll usually get one or two teams that'll be more heavily represented. It's really hard with 32 teams in the league to get even representation. And if you're going to have breaks like that where you could literally go and completely be shut out, 
maybe throw in maybe throwing in some cheap cards as, as kind of like a consolation prize because it's, it kind of hurts to see the envelope in the mail and go I know exactly what's in here there's not a lot I have one other uh, break that came also from the from a similar thing but it was for Spectra I did pull I did get the Packers I pulled a couple of more cards but I'll show that to you when that one arrives in the mail so next one I'm adding is a vintage card to my collection so this is a 6061 Parkhurst Johnny Bauer so card number three you can see this one's a little bit creased up. It's not a super high-end card, but nice addition to collection, and I like adding the Hall of Famers. So I've been slowly chipping away at this set. This one's not a super high priority, but it is something I'm working on. You got the logo there in the background. So it is something I'm kind of working on, but I'm kind of picking up the Hall of Famers for the most part. I will then pick up the singles. There's only 61 cards in the set, so I've got 13 at this point in time. Um, but I'm going to get close. I'm going to start picking up a few more, hopefully, this fall and winter. And then uh, once I'm past about 25 or 30, then then I'm really going to put the hammer down on this a little bit and start adding. But Johnny Bauer is a good one to pick up for that. All right, so the next couple are part of two new subsets that I'm working on. So the first one is going to be to go along with the Delgado thing. I'm also picking up some rookies of some of my uh, favorite Blue Jays from, uh, from the last couple of decades. So one of the ones on the list to go along with Delgado, a former teammate. So Gem Min 10, 1992 Upper Deck card of Sean Green. So both he and Delgado were part of that young batting nucleus that they had. Two guys who could hit 30 to 40 home runs a year, 100 RBIs, great hitters. You had it along with Halliday. You've had this lineup that on paper seemed to be really great. That kind of leads me to thinking about right now what uh, Jays fans are pinning their hopes and dreams on. Uh, they're looking at Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette and thinking, oh man, how great it would be to have these guys in the lineup. It could be. But at the same time, there was once upon a time you had Roy Halladay, you had Sean Green, and you had Carlos Delgado, and they just weren't ready. They weren't able to ever put all the pieces together. I'm not going to be overly pessimistic about it. I'm still interested to see how it turns out, but it is kind of fun to go back and look at the talent they did have on that club for a period of time, especially when I was attending a ton of Jays games at the time that these guys were coming up. Next card here is going to be for uh, more for Green Bay Packers here. Uh, this is a vintage one. So this is a 1957 Topps. Uh, card of Fred Cohn of the Packers. So you've got them in their kind of old school, you know, blue and yellow uniforms. Um, really nice card though, because this is a uh, near mint seven. Uh, it's got the marking, uh, it's got the mark designator there, and I'll show you where I think that is right now. But overall, like a super clean card. I really like the this particular year. So I think the marking is uh, just that little spot right there. So otherwise, really super clean card. So kind of in contrast to some of the stuff I do with other vintage cards, what I'm kind of hoping to do with uh, this is I'd love to get some of the, uh, especially the 50s Packers cards, I'd love to get them in graded condition like this. Uh, the common guys, I'm going to try to shoot for somewhere between 5, 6, and 7. You know, more collector grade and nice cards if possible. The guys obviously for this year that I won't be doing that for is going to be Paul Horning and uh, the Bart Star rookie. So I'm going to shoot for doing 57 tops first. So I'm going to try to add a couple of the cards to this collection. But for the more common guys, I can definitely do those in 5, 6, and 7. And if they're going to look like this, you know, no reason why, why I shouldn't. I'll take my time on this. These are going to take a little while to source and find the right ones. All right, and last, just to finish this off, I'm going to feature this again in a collection video that will probably be coming out on Tuesday. So 1954, Bowman Mantle. So... The feature showcase is going to be for my mantle cards. So Bowman and Tops, and just regular edition during his playing days, the ones that I have. So this is actually an upgrade of one that I had before that was already a pretty destroyed copy. Uh, but this one here is also a PSA 1, but it's kind of a, it's a nice PSA 1. It's got pretty good eye appeal, and I really like the set, and I think the shot they got on this was really good. So it's still a nice, clean card. You can, uh, you can read everything, no tears, no major... Uh, even the creases that are on it are not, like, ridiculous. They're not cutting all the way through the card. For one, that is really clean. Pretty much the only thing that's off on it, uh, more than anything, is the centering. Like you can see, it's pretty much all the way over to the left. But you've still got the border there, and that's a great looking card to add to the collection. So, proud to add it to the rest, and, uh, we'll, s and we'll see if I'm able to upgrade some of the other ones as I go along and complete uh, the Mantle collection, minus probably the 52 tops. So that's it for today. Uh, quite a number of pickups, so I'm going to stop it there since the video is going to be long enough. Uh, let me know if you have a favorite card, or if you've picked up anything great recently. I'd love to talk about it. Otherwise, uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.